Hey everyone, how are you? I am so excited to be here today. Uh, I get the benefit, the privilege, the honor to um, interview a, cl a close friend of mine, Amy Porterfield, um, someone who I've looked up to for years, known for years. And if you guys don't know who Amy is, uh, she's an online marketing expert and the host of the Top Ring podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy. Uh, through her best selling courses, books, and popular podcasts, Amy's action by action approach proves that even the newest online entrepreneurs can bypass the overwhelm and instead generate uh, exciting momentum as they build a business they love. And, um, you know, as, as, uh, as a mentor goes, she is like the, the cream of the crop. Um, her curated, her, the content that she creates and puts together um, in every uh, program that I've ever gone in that she's built and she's been doing this for... 15 years, yeah. maybe. Um, it's just, it's absolutely, there's no other better content for uh, uh, that I've ever seen out of anybody um, curating and putting together and refining a course. So uh, Amy, hands down, just you put so much energy into it. I love it. Um, Thank you, my friend. I'm Casey, it's so nice to be here. I've, I've always such a fan of yours. It's always so fun then when we get to talk and it's been too long. So thanks for having me. I know, I know, I know. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, hey, I wanna, I wanna dig in. Obviously, um, you know, we've just talked about it. You are, uh, you know, you've been doing course creation for so long. Um, I want to ask you, you know, just straight out of the, out of the gate. Um, one thing that I, I think people ask, you know, and you're talking potentially to an audience who are they, they may have a course or they are. And, and maybe it's not performing well. Um, they are doing maybe service or one-on-one -on -one consulting, and they've thought about courses. They're just not sure if it's right for them. I, I guess I wanted to ask: Do you do you think everybody has a course in them? You know, um, just right out of the gate. I love this question. So I actually do. I do think everybody has a course in them. Do I think everybody should create a course? No, not necessarily. So let's break that down just a little. The reason I say that everybody does have a course in them is because the way I teach courses and the way I teach my students to come up with their topic that will be profitable and make an impact is to first look at where have you gotten results in your life for yourself or for someone else and in a personal space or a business space. So where have you gotten results? And a lot of my students will start their first course with results they've gotten for themselves. And I say that you only need a 10% edge, which means mm. you only need to be 10% of ahead of those you serve in order to teach what you know. And if you're willing to lay it out in a step-by-step -step format and just say, hey, follow me, I've been here, I know where you want to go, you have a course in you. And so why I teach the 10% edge is a lot of people think they need more education, more time, more expertise, more certifications. You do not. You already know enough. And I want to just tell a really quick story. One of my students, she's a lawyer and she uh, was working a lot of crazy hours as lawyers do. And she put together her own time management system. It was a little odd, a little quirky, but it worked really well for her as a lawyer. And as she was just like killing it with this new time management system she created from scratch, other people were asking her like, how are you doing this? So she started to teach a few people one-on-one -on -one and realized this is working. So she ended up creating a digital course with her quirky time management system that works like gangbusters and it did incredibly well. Uh, over time, she launched it several times. She made over $200,000 wow. and she actually decided to quit her job as a lawyer and go all in with her digital courses. And so all from a 10% edge, all from something she created and got results from her for herself. So that's just one of many stories to say, you absolutely have a course in you. Now, through the course of this conversation with you, Casey, we'll talk a little bit about should you create a course or not, but yes, everyone does have a course in them. Well, yeah, because I think a lot of people feel like they are imposter syndrome. It just takes yeah. over so glaringly. It's just so obvious to to so many people. I love this 10% edge because it's all that's required. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you have to get a master's degree in this thing. And, you know, it it you just have to be 10 steps ahead 
or 10 percent ahead of exactly. your audience which I, I i think is so fabulous um so uh you know what in terms of of course creation and i'd love you you know you touched on this you know what what are what are things that are that's changing the evolution of like the course landscape and as you just said um you know uh everyone has a course inside uh, that's inside them but should they be launching it i mean can we com combine those conversations together like what's yeah. what's kind of new and does that that answer that you said reflect on the timing of the, like of, of the now like is it is our our courses like are are is everybody starting is it getting overwhelmed with saturation around courses yeah. or is there just like something that's necessary to rise above some of what we see nowadays with course so, creation you know i have heard this question a lot lately because people will assume like oh my gosh is it too saturated are there too many courses out in the world and there is stat after stat that courses are only getting more popular the digital course industry is billions and billions of dollars and we see it still on the rise and the reason for that is because after COVID, uh, you know, COVID actually changed the landscape for course creators in the best possible way. If we needed a silver lining for COVID, it's the rise of digital courses. Mm. Because what happened is people decided, okay, I can't go to my guitar lesson. You know, I'm not allowed to leave my house right now, or I have more time on my hands because now I work from home. It's a different uh, atmosphere here and I don't have a commute. So more and more people started to become curious to learn something new, to dive into something they hadn't had time for. So all of a sudden people were taking advantage of the ease of digital courses. So we saw more people be more accepting of them, be more curious about them, be more open to digital courses. And so that opened a whole new world and I haven't seen it go back at all. So that mm. right there is really promising. And also with that, you know, uh, to answer the question, is a digital course right for you? If you are a coach, a consultant, a service-based provider, a creator of any kind, and you already created a business, whether it's a, a baby business that you're getting off the ground or you've been in business for a while, adding a digital course to the mix will allow for more freedom for you because if you create one course, this is how I teach it, you create one course and then you launch that course over and over again. I've had the same course since 2019 and I launch it over and over again. And every year it's gotten more successful. Why? Well, because I've become better at webinars, which hopefully we're going to talk about yeah. webinars and social media and email list growth and um, showing up online, understanding my audience. And the course has gotten better every year because I tweak it and make it better as I learn from the students who have gone through it. So the goal is one course that you can launch over and over and over again, giving you more freedom. But also, let's say you're a coach and you do one on one, you will always hit a revenue ceiling. There's only one of you in so many hours in a day. And so in order for you to charge more and maybe take less one on one customers, you can have a digital course that will make up that revenue and then some. So adding a course into the business, so valuable. Let's say you're a service provider and you create websites. One of my students has done this. She created a course for um, website building. And she said, but Amy, I'm scared to do this because then what if they don't want me to do it for them anymore? I build websites. If I create a course to teach other people how to build their own website, they won't need me. And I said, that is a scarcity mindset. There are two different people on this planet, one group, never wants to do it themselves and will always pay someone to do it for them. The other yeah. is a DIY type of group. They both exist and they are both very important. So you won't lose customers. If anything, they go through your course and if they decide they don't want to do it themselves, oh, look, I've got someone to ask to do it for me. So there's many different ways you can add courses into your world. I feel like I'm talking way too much. I know there was one other part of that question, but I'm going to give you a chance to talk. No, that was so fabulous. Uh, and and what you're what you're showing is like a course can be an add-on to any any yeah. business and um and the and if you if you're doing repetitive tasks for every single person that you do a service with and you're noticing wow i keep having to do this particular thing if you courseify it uh, um then it's almost like now they can it's like a process they can go through that themselves you know and it just frees up your time so 
I love that you mentioned that um, and and the scarcity mindset and thinking um, in a much bigger way that of course is actually like a tool that can bring someone through and show them how they can do it. But then, as you said, two type of people, two type of uh, of people out there, someone yeah. will still want someone to do the the work for them. So it's so great that you said that. Um, so maybe we can talk. Um, you know, I, I want to ask a, a quick question, though, uh, you know, before we jump into webinars, um, what inspired you to create DCA? You know, um, like what, what did you notice in the marketplace? Like how, how, what was, what, what sparked that for you? Yeah, I'm just so, curious about that. Uh, DCA is uh, my signature course, Digital Course Academy, where I teach people how to create a digital course from scratch even if you don't have a big email list or even a website yet, or even a full blown business, or you're more advanced and you just wanna add a course to the mix like we talked about. But I teach you how to create a course that will be profitable. And then I teach you how to launch it either with live launching or with evergreen. Mm. Um, so the reason I created it is that 15 years ago, I left my corporate job and my goal was to create my own digital courses and get them out into the world. And that's how I wanted to build my business. I love teaching. I love the education aspect of digital courses and I love one to many. I'm not really a one-on-one -on -one kind of girl. I'm an introvert and I uh, don't want to really be tied to time for dollars. And so I knew I wanted to create digital courses, but I didn't have a course. I didn't know of any courses at the time. I just watched a bunch of other people do it. And I thought I could do this. And so I launched my first digital course in the area of marketing and social media. And I made a whopping $267. And I thought I'd make a hundred thousand dollars because I just assumed that's what everyone was making online, which I'm sure was not true, but you know how social media goes. Yeah. And so I cried for an entire week. I thought I'm going to have to grovel back for my job. Like, uh, I'm not, this is not going to work for me. And then my husband's like, let's get it together. Let's get back out there and let's try again. Thank God for those people in your life that support you and think you could do anything. And mm -hmm. I did get back out there. And the next launch, I made 10,000, the next launch 50,000. So it started to grow and people started to say, how are you doing this? How do you know how to do webinars that convert uh, into course sales? How do you know how to set up these funnels? How do you know how to create a course that people actually want? So I got so many questions and uh, way back in the day, I created a course on courses and a course on webinars. So I used to have two different courses and then I realized, I think these need to go together. Once you have a course, if you don't know how to sell it, what's the point? If you know how to sell a course and don't have one, what's the point? So I put them together in 2019 and the rest is history. We've helped over 90,000 people through wow. our courses and the success stories are incredible. So I get so excited to hear success story after success story from people that literally start from scratch or have been in business for years, but just didn't know how to do it. So it's very inspiring to me. It's why I get up every morning. That's incredible. I love hearing that. And I've, I've seen the journey, so I I'm privy to the journey and it's just been yeah, really been incredible. Forever. That's I know, I know. Um, and, and, uh, I've been through both programs, uh, just absolutely love them and the value they've, uh, and they've, they've certainly helped with conversions, um, from our webinars that we put together. So it's just been such a, a wonderful thing to see and use and see the results from. So, um, and, and with that in mind, um, you know, because we're talking to people that, that are, that are running webinars, um, or thinking about running webinars and, they they know that they work right. They they maybe have watched you. Maybe they've watched somebody else that said webinars work, but they're kind of nervous about them. Maybe they're like super overwhelmed. You know what? Is there anything we can discuss and talk about um, to sort of pull the overwhelm off of running a webinar? Um, to to kind of set the stage of like why it's it's really important and how to kind of push beyond that 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 pain especially if someone's maybe very shy on camera and they don't not they're not they they haven't done a lot of presentations what are what are some strategies you think for them that could help I love that we're talking about this because I did not 
I wasn't born with the gene of being great on webinars. And I really actually don't think anybody is. Right. And uh, back in the day, my corporate job was working for Tony Robbins. And my first experience with a webinar, it was go to webinar back in the day. And uh, we were doing a big webinar for Tony. And the night before we had to practice. So Tony was at his house online. I was still in the office. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And we were just practicing, making sure we had never done it. He had never done a webinar at that point. So we were practicing. And at the end, he's like, okay, I'm ready to go. And this, everyone had signed up. It was the next morning. And I pressed a button still to this day, don't know what I pressed. And the webinar was deleted. And all the people who had signed up for the webinar got an email that said, this webinar has been canceled. Everyone the night before. (laughs) And I wanted to die. I definitely, after we got off the call, had a crying session. I think we're seeing a theme. I'm a crier here, but it was devastating. And Tony was very frustrated as he should have been. And so that was my first experience with a webinar. The technology failed me. Uh, Luckily, we stayed up all night, the team, not Tony, and somehow got it back together and everyone got an email in the morning. Just kidding, we're on. But it was devastating to me. I could have said in that moment, I'm not good with technology. Webinars are not my thing. I'm never touching a webinar. Definitely not on my own. But I didn't because I knew webinars are the most powerful way to one, teach before you sell, give value before you ask for anything, but also people get to see your personality, your teaching style. You get to connect in a way that I don't know any other sales vehicle that that does it. When I get on a webinar, I always say, no matter if they buy or not, I walk away today feeling, I walk away having them feel inspired, excited, and driven to take action. And so I'm always like, I'm here to serve first, sell second. And Mm. I think that puts me in such a great place to add value during a webinar. So fast forward to today, I've done hundreds and hundreds of them, and I teach people how to do them. And most of the people I teach how to do webinars, they're exactly what you said, Casey. They do not feel comfortable on video. They do not feel uh, comfortable presenting live. The technology kind of freaks them out. And they're like, please tell me there's another way. There's other ways, again, not as powerful. So this is what I'll say. Practice makes perfect. And this really was a big thing for me. If you were to see my first few webinars, you would cringe. They they were not good. I was very nervous. And um, back in the day, you didn't have to show your face. And so that was even better. It was just slides and audio. And quite honestly, I still have peers that just use slides and audio on their webinars. But even if you just show your face for a minute, then you could just go to slides and audio and not worry about it. I teach my students ways to ease into it, baby steps. But also the secret to a really great webinar is making sure your slide deck that you've practiced it, that you've prepared in a way that you're gonna feel more confident when you get on video. And it's not gonna be the first time you ever delivered that content. I have my students practice behind the scenes, like go through the whole thing without stopping. So there's little things that you can do, but what I want you all to hear is it gets easier as you continue to do them. It's okay if you mess up. I've had many webinars where the audio went out, my slides weren't working, um, I didn't know I was on camera and I was, that's always fun. But people are so forgiving when you're live because they just want to, one, help you, but also get value from you. So I promise you it gets easier as you go. That's so great. I mean, <laughs> that's so true. I've had the worst webinars ever. Right? And and they still generated sales. Like yes. you, you I I I'm a classic oversharer and a stutterer. And doing both of those in a webinar. Uh, I, I, they still did really decently. Um, I remember one incident where I, I was in the back farmhouse of my uh, wife's parents, um, uh, house in Iowa, dead of winter. Uh, you had the heater blaring. So it was loud la, 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 in this trailer. Basically, uh, I had just the crappy onboarding, uh, the, the mic that was on my laptop. Yeah. And it I, it was like a two and a half hour webinar. I just just overshared, overshared, overshared. I was like s- nervous about like not providing enough value. And so I over delivered and all said and done. I did. I did good. Um, that crazy. That's the thing. If you really care and you are mindful of offering value, that other stuff absolutely does not matter. And I think that's the coolest thing about it. And also, here's the little secret. When you learn webinars, whether from Casey or me or somebody else, and you learn how to put together a really good high converting deck, 
you will have a flow that you just get to follow along with your slides, a flow that actually will get you sales. So it's not like slapping together a bunch of slides and hoping it works. There's a formula for this. There's a way to do it right. And when you learn that, that's when your confidence will soar. Absolutely. And there once, you, and, and as you, as you said, practice, 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 yes. once you, you, you'll feel good about doing it. It'll be fun at that point. You yeah, know, what a it's concept. Just, it actually yeah. is fun when you've been doing it for a while, but the first few are not fun. And I didn't have Absolutely. fun either. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had my, like my, uh, you know, my daughter's streak in the background and all sorts <laughs> of stuff. Not only did the tech go crazy, but like just barking dogs and kids, it's just, oh, it can be, I, you know, it's, you just have to accept it and then that still do really it. Yes. And still do it. You're right. That reminds me really fast. Uh, our mutual friend, you know, Stu McLaren, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So his wife was on a webinar or a call of some sort on zoom and he, they were in a hotel. And so he needed to get to the other side of the room. So he thought, okay, I'm just going to crawl. I'm going to get below the camera <laughs> and I'm going to crawl. You literally saw him crawling across the floor the whole way while she's oh trying to do God. this webinar. So, and it still was okay. <laughs> so these things happen. <laughs> Yeah, guys, this stuff, it's, it's, it's par for the course. Yes. Um, but it, you know, it's growth. If you just continue to do it, you'll see success. Um, you know, a lot of people think webinars are dead, but what do you think? Oh my goodness. I, my success is from webinars. My success of selling, uh, 90,000 students into my courses. Those are all webinars. And so they are alive and well. And the thing is, because technology has gotten so dang good, there's some really cool things that you can do with webinars to connect with your audience through chat and through um, making sure that they actually show up for your webinar and engaging with them while you're on your webinar. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's only gotten better and easier. I sound like the, the dad that says like, I walked to school uphill both ways. Well, yeah. when I started webinars 15 years ago, they were not yeah. nearly as good in terms of the software as they are now. So mm -hmm. it's a good time to get into the webinar game. It's, it's very true. Uh, and I, I think I sound like that too, actually. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> But what you really, uh, something that came up while you were talking, um, I, I started thinking 90,000 uh, students. Um, can we talk about course math? Um, yes. You know, what's possible in terms of revenue for a digital course? Um, okay. You know, uh, as it relates to webinars, like conversion. I mean, if you want to get dorky, we can talk conversion numbers and things like that. If, if you're okay, cool. I'd love to talk conversion numbers with you because we, you're the expert more so than me. I just know what I've done and what my students do, but let's talk about that after the little, a little course math, because yeah. that will be interesting as well. So when I talk about course math, I actually learned this from Stu, speaking of Stu, when he teaches mm. membership math. And I thought, Ooh, that would work for course math as well. It's very simple, but I think sometimes we, we look over the simplicity of something and just make it hard. And so there are over 7 billion people in this world. And when you're thinking about selling courses, you need a tiny, tiny sliver of the internet to pay attention for you to be insanely profitable. So let's go back to what I said earlier. One course that you launch over and over again, whether you do it live or evergreen, or the reason it's one course is that every time you start from scratch, every time you reinvent the wheel, every time you're like, oh, okay, I need a new idea. You're slowing yourself down. Mm -hmm. You're putting more time, effort, energy into something, which means you're going to wait to see any of the results. And so at the end of the year, you're likely not hitting your goals. But if you have one course that you know you're going to launch that thing over and over again, you're not starting from scratch, you're not slowing yourself down, and you're only getting better, that's when you start to hit your revenue goals. So when I do course math, I'm talking about the same course that we're launching over and over again. So let's say you had a course and you charge $300, which is a really good price. Not too low, not too high, $300. And the first time you launch it, 50 people buy it. 50 people buy your $300 course. I can promise you when you start growing your email list and start growing your social, even small list, you can get 50 people to buy your course. That is $15,000, $15,000. If you have 50 units, $300. So let's say you do that again, six months later, even if you want to wait that long, six months later, now you have made $30,000 in one year with a course that you just created once. But when you start to think about that 75 units, 
that's over $22,000, a hundred units, a hundred people, just a hundred people need to buy from you right away. That's $30,000 in one launch, $60,000. If you launch it twice that year. Now, 100 mm. people might seem a lot to you right now. If let's say you have no email list or a couple hundred people on your email list in a small social, but remember what I started with, we're going to start with just 50 people. We get better and better and better. So when I first started that first launch, I made $267. Um, I think I sold just a few units, but I took out a thousand dollars in expenses and didn't really make much of anything. But right. the second time I launched it, my email list was bigger because I already launched it once. When you launch and do mm -hmm. webinars, your email list grows. So mm -hmm. every launch, your email list grows and your success can skyrocket. I went from 267 to $10,000 on the next launch. Mm. It doesn't have to be tiny little bits of success. It could be a big one when you get it right. So mm. I just use this course math to say, you don't need a lot of people or a huge email list to sell 50 units and make $15,000 and do it all over again, probably to bigger success. So I like to put it into context like that because it's absolutely doable. And it, and it grows exponentially if you're consistently still list building, right? Yes, every yeah. single time. It can get bigger and bigger. And here's the thing with web uh, webinar conversions, if you continue to get better and better at your webinars, now when you do that webinar, the second launch, your conversions are going to go up. And so what, what kind of conversions do you see, um, especially with Evergreen, but live launching too? Casey, what are you seeing? I, uh, what we, what we see is about 5%, probably what you, you're, you're, um, familiar with five to 7% from, uh, evergreen and yeah. then 10%, uh, from live, uh, you can go either way, depending on, you know, in your replay series, if you can bring in another 10, depending on, you know, how, how great it is that also, it, um, can be the same for your evergreen too. Your evergreen can even bump to 10 depending on your follow-up sequence. So true. I, I have a friend, I won't name names because it's her personal info. She does a 14% conversion on an evergreen webinar. That wow. is insanely high. I feel like I do great. I'm not near that. So yeah, uh, it's possible though. So Casey, this is kind of exciting. So um, when I promote Digital Course Academy um, uh, coming up soon, we're doing something really special where I'm doing live webinars. And here's the fun thing. I've been doing webinars for 15 years and I wanted to change things up. So I'm actually going into one of those really cool studios where you see all the Zoom screens yes. behind you and in front of you so I could see everybody and engage with them just to kind of challenge myself and up my game with live webinars. So I'm excited about that. But we also are doing something new where we're not going to have a replay on our live webinars this year. If you don't make it live, we are going to give people an option of an evergreen webinar where they could just watch it right there on demand, or they mm. could say, oh, I'm going to watch it in three hours from now and they'll get a link when the next webinar is. And so we're actually in a live launch. We're doing live webinars and evergreen webinars. It's an experiment, but we've seen other people do it and we're really excited about that. I absolutely love that you're going to do that. I've yeah. done that before and it really works. Oh, um, I'm so excited. I love that you're also going to do an on-demand. So like drive people to an on-demand, probably have the, the length of that on-demand webinar, the length of like when your offer ends. Is that is that the plan? Yes, yes. Do you think it's so, a good idea? Like the countdown? Absolutely, 100%. I, I, I think... I, I just believe that live webinars, encore presentations, and evergreen webinars are just a fabulous way to just get to not, I always feel like live webinars, the real estate ends after the webinar. Like, you know, people go to the link and oftentimes people don't, you know, it just expired, it's over. But like, if you're always driving somebody to a page that started live, then that same page now is evergreen or, you know, on demand, then you're, you're not wasting the real estate and people are still coming in and they're still able to buy. And no, I absolutely love that idea. It's good. that's so, badass. That's really excited. great. That's and really here's good. The beautiful thing for those listening that maybe you haven't really embraced webinars yet. 
There's so much opportunity that you could be doing cool things like that and experimenting, but what it takes is for you to get in the game, do your first webinar, mm -hmm. or if you did it and it didn't go well, newsflash, most first webinars don't do well. Like that is very normal for a new business owner or entrepreneur get back at it. Keep going and tell yourself, I will not give up till I am great at this. And I'm telling you right now, it's the best vehicle for digital courses, quite honestly, for memberships, for masterminds. Like I really do think it's value. Uh, webinars are so valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think you just have to, like, if you have a bad webinar, which we all, we everybody all does, do. you just have to just get back on the horse. I, and I think I'll, so many people just give up because they the, the fear of looking stupid is probably the worst fear out there, right? Yes, you're people right. would rather be held up with a gun than than face a camera sometimes. I've like yeah. I've heard that stat. It's just absolutely insane. Oh. Um but it happens guys and you just have to push forward. Um Amy, this was so great. Thank you so much for your time today. Um you know, I I obviously, you know, with the, with the evergreen webinars, you, you've been a customer of easy webinar and using, uh, us, uh, for evergreen webinar for such a long Absolutely. time. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, I wanted to ask, uh, a couple of questions. Um, you know, has like, do you feel like, you know, when, when it comes to evergreen, um, do you feel like it, it helps, um, your, to, does it bring you more time back? I mean, you're doing a live launch, you know, but you talk about evergreen, how impactful is ever, evergreen in kind of your model for, you know, as you do in the year, you know, with. Yes. So I have two digital courses and really they're the bulk of my revenue throughout the entire year. One, I launch live once a year. That's digital course Academy. I only offer it once. It's always a live webinar now with this cool component during the live webinar with evergreen. But then I also have a list building course that is on evergreen all year. And we have really big goals, like multi-million dollar goals with our Evergreen product. So it's a very big part of our business. And we love Easy Webinar and think it's the best tool out there. And we couldn't have the kind of success we have without it. And um, we have a goal of uh, increasing our Evergreen uh, revenue next year, like adding mm. a different program to the mix. Because let's be honest, Evergreen is way easier than live launching. I love both and I think both are valuable, but I would never ever have a digital course in my business without some component of Evergreen. Right, right. Yeah. And 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 the, I mean, I think it's important for people, you have to do live so you can get good at doing Evergreen, right? And I think yeah. you, you teach that in fact, yes. in your program. Um, so I think it's really important, but then when you can go evergreen, um, you're starting to scale and you look at metrics and, and, and things like that. So I love that you said that is, are there any features that, um, for people that are looking to do evergreen, are there any particular features that you love, um, as it relates to evergreen, you know, th this gets a little geeky and I'm sorry about that, but like any specific, like geek feature. That, no, that... I love it. So the just in time webinars, I love that feature from easy mm. webinar. We take advantage of that for sure. I think our students love it. I mean, there's so many great features. Uh, that is one of my favorites, but I also want to say this, it's a really easy tool to use. I am not techie at all. And I have a team now, so they'll get in there and do it. But I absolutely used to do all the setup for my, uh, uh, evergreen webinars. And so the fact that I could figure it out, that means that you guys have nailed it. And it's only gotten better year after year. But I also love easy webinar for the fact that you guys care deeply about the people you work with. I know this because I'm your friend and I hear the stories. And so the fact that you listen to people, you see what's working for them, not working for them, you take their suggestions, you're always improving it. This is why I tell everybody to use your tool. I love it. I, I love you for saying that. Thank you so much. And I mean, here, at the end of the day, you know, we we also take our cues off success. So we see what your successes look like, and we try to double down on building a tool around what we see, the cues we see from our top uh, clients and customers. So you have been a big uh, help in, in actually where the product has gone. So okay. it's just wonderful feedback for us, and then we can feed it back and help other digital course creators. Um, and the, the biggest part of, of this conversation is that if you are a digital course creator, or if you're someone who's wanting to create a course, 
Uh, if you are someone who has have has has ha is having lackluster results in course creation, um, you need to follow Amy, and you need to just uh, join her for a lot of cool trainings that she's going to be doing uh, that we will that we're going to actually talk about. Um, so I, I I wanted to say um, that I think you have a workshop that's happening in yeah. September. Um, can we can we touch on that just to, for for just a sec? Yeah, I'm really excited. So once a year I do a boot camp, and it's called mm. Course Confident. And it's for everyone that you just mentioned, either you're a little course curious, and you thought, could I do this? Is, is this something that could work for me? Get into the boot camp. If you have a course that didn't work for you, and you kind of want to start over with the basics to make sure you've covered all the important aspects to get a course up and running, get into the boot camp. Or if it's something you've just been thinking about creating forever, and you're like, I have no idea where to start get into the boot camp. So it's for coaches, consultants, creators of all kinds, uh, nine to fivers who are looking to create a course as a side hustle, you are all welcome. So here's what it is. For five days, I do live trainings. They're all recorded. I'm mm -hmm. live, I'm engaging in the group, and I'm teaching you the first steps you need to know to get that course up and running. Um, one of the first steps is choosing a topic that's going to be profitable and successful. I have something called the course creator sweet spot, and mm -hmm. I take you through four different quadrants to make that decision on what that course is going to be about and make sure it's going to be successful by validation exercises. So we get into that right away. We also talk about what to charge for a course. Something that most people don't know is you don't decide your course costs, like how much your course is going to cost based on how many modules or lessons or how long it is. Those aren't even things we talk about when we come up with a price. So I'll teach you how to choose the perfect price for your course. And then from there, what type of course are you going to create? There's four types of courses. I won't give them away here, but you're gonna make the decision on what type of course you're gonna create and it will kickstart all the content that you wanna teach. It will, how much or how little do I put into my course? And then finally, how to find the audience that will buy this course to make it successful. So we cover all of that in the bootcamp, but here's the cool thing. It's one of the cheapest things I offer all year. It's just 47 bucks and you get all oh. of that and you'll be in a community of other people who want to create a course as well. So fabulous. Uh, everybody should join that. Um, we will have the, the, the link, um, here. Um, I believe it's going to be easywebinar.com forward slash DCA. Uh, and guys, it's, it's, it's going to be great. All of those things she, she just described, everybody needs, um, right there. Uh, especially around the pricing, um, which I think is fabulous. Um, again, Amy, thank you for the time today. This was great. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you, even if it's been a couple of years. Um, and uh, love to you and your family. And um, we're excited for your DCA this year. Casey, thank you so very much. It's, it's always so fun to chat with you. I appreciate you. Take care. Okay. See ya.